In this video, we're going to go over the basics of getting started for Laboratory 2. We're going to be going over diodes, and we'll look at operating points in SPICE and doing a DC sweep so that we can look at the change in voltage and the change in current uh, on the diode when applied. We've got a couple simple schematic diagrams that we're going to follow. We'll build this first figure one and go through some of the first uh, questions here on a forward bias diode. So to get started, we'll open up a normal KiCad schematic as usual. We're going to be using a custom diode uh, and using the manufacturer's model inside of our schematic. So we won't use the standard NG Spice diode, but we'll bring in a P Spice diode. So start your new schematic. And you can use a blank uh, canvas just like this, or a workspace. So we'll place a symbol to start. And we're going to scroll down and look for our P Spice library. And let's select diode. We'll hit OK. And we're just going to place the general diode into our, uh, into our workspace. There's a couple of things we need to do to make sure that this is the diode that we're using. So I'm going to press Escape on the keyboard. And then I'm going to double click the diode reference and I'm going to make sure that's D1. I'm going to leave the standard diode model here and you'll see why in a second. I'm going to double click that symbol. And I have a few other things I can add, a data sheet we can put a link to. But what I need to do is click Edit Spice Model. And if you look, there's a blank library here. I'm going to select File and I'm going to go through and try to find that, that file. And I know I saved it here. So now I can select that model as the D1N914. And that is the uh, model here you can see. It's using now in NG Spice the DN, uh, the 1N914 diode. Here's all the characteristics for that diode. And you can see this one was created by the manufacturer. So I'm going to make sure to hit OK. And if you scroll down now, all of the fields listed here, you can see are right in the spice lib file. If you want to be careful about not using crazy directories, you can go to your file and copy it into the project folder. You'll see. So I'll find my original file. I will copy that dot lib file. And then I can find my project. And there's my lab two and just paste it right here. Then what I can do is update this field or I can edit the spice model again and choose that model within that and it should give me a little bit clearer definition. So sometimes it's nice to just select. So now see how the library is not a huge long list. It's just the spice lib file right within our project. So it's kind of nice now you have a separate instance within our within your project. That's all we need to do to set up this spice model, and we'll hit OK. Now this particular diode is assigned as the 1N914. If I enter a new diode, a blank diode, it won't have those parameters until I, again, give it that library. When we start using custom components, uh, NG Spice and KiCad, it still needs us to copy that spice init file. So if you have it already in your name and there's my spice in it file just copy that leave it in here that's for general NG spice and then when you start using the uh, custom libraries for some reason you also need a copy of that file within your program files here KiCad and then look at bin and you can just place it right here you can see mine is already placed so just make sure you've replace that file here and that in that way it, it will initialize the spice simulation 
Okay, so it'll take all the general and then it'll also take all those custom models. A little confusing, but just make sure to copy that same spice in it file in your program files KiCad bin. All right, that should be all the setup we need. Now we can build our circuit. So the reference circuit here is looking for a one kilo ohm uh, resistor, and we'll use a variable voltage source here. I'm going to place my symbols and I'll make sure to select voltage source. Place a symbol and then make sure to select my resistor. You can see if you've been messing around, they should already exist. And I just need my uh, zero volt reference. And I'll put one there. And I'll put one there. And the last thing to do is connect all these things with wires before we start setting our parameters. And just make sure you click those nodes. And that should complete our basic circuit. First off, let's make sure that this is V1 and this is R1 so that we have specific definitions for each of our references. The resistor here is going to be a 1K. And this voltage source is just going to be a DC voltage, so we can type in DC1. And that'll ensure that it stays a DC voltage. All right, now that our setup is basically complete for that circuit, all we need to do is set up our parameters. And there's a couple ways to do this, but the quick way to do this, if you already know, is to just create a graphic text. And then this particular parameter set, we're going to just take all the voltages from the lab and put them in a graph. So we don't have to manually adjust the power supply and then you know check the voltage, check the current, and move on. So in the lab manual, if you go all the way down, it's asking you to find voltages from 0 0.5, 1, all the way up to 10 volts. So what we'll do is instead we'll use the simulator to get all of those voltages and graph them. So we'll take V1 on a DC. We'll go from 0 to uh, 10 volts. And then our step size will, will be 0.5. So we'll go half a volt at a time. We'll hit OK, and then we should be able to place that. Let's go to Tools and Simulator. And here we can double check our settings here. And if you look, our incremental step is half a volt, 500 millivolts, and then 10 volts, 0 volts. That's V1 on that V source. So our graphic text turned out to be correct. We'll hit OK. We'll run stop the simulation. It looks like everything went correctly. And now that we can start adding those signals in, what we really want here is the, uh, the current on V1. And there you go. So now you can see at each of these half volt intervals or 500 millivolt intervals, what that current is across. Okay. We can also probe different areas, but this should just get you started. If you look here, you can also uh, pull in you know, current across R and things like that. If you'd like to probe specific places, you can always, you know, click and then you can go back to your simulation. Okay, so you can see it added those selections. If you want to remove a signal, just hide signal, hide signal. And that should get you started for setting up. You're, feel free to play with some of the settings in the DC voltage sweep and also uh, with the diode model. If you want to reverse the diode, there's a couple ways to do that. You can physically flip this model around if you right click and orientation and you can mirror out Y and then reconnect your wires. 
you just need to now use a voltage from negative 10 to zero, and that should give you a reverse curve. You can also go into the model and in the edit spice model, you can alternate node sequence. So you can look up the ng uh, spice model for this. That's two ways to flip uh, the, the bias of the, the diode. I'll leave that up to you to figure out. It's pretty straightforward and it's pretty fun. So there's the first example basically set forward. Remember, if you want a better way to do uh, signals, you can always place a global label and then you can say you want uh, D in, and we'll say that's an input. And we can place that here, and then you can do the same thing. You can place global label maybe over here, and we can call that D out, and that's an output. And we can put that you know right after this diode. You can also include the resistor here. You got a lot of options for analyzing the circuit. These D in, D out, all these labels, those are like our um, probes for our oscilloscope. So you can place your wires to these points, connect up these nets, and now you have more things to check in your simulator and you know what they are because they're labeled. So nothing should have changed, but if I add signals, now I've got my D in and D out. Hit OK, and there you go. So you can see that. Add signals, D out. Great. Uh, by looking at this graph, you can see that current between the voltage of the output and input, and you can see a really nice curve as uh, the voltage is increased over time. So play around with simulations, see if you can't figure out the reverse bias. And also try the above example that includes our uh, voltage divider and two different diodes. Good luck, and please reach out if you need any help.